thanks for joining us ladies and gentlemen on our prime time news we are live from cameroon's economic capital city uh, douala social media kills the mayor of tico subdivision but he lives in tico the mayor will be speaking in this edition of the news and the number of covid 19 cases keep rising in cameroon what is the problem the government is strategizing but now to be able to decentralize the fight against covid 19 those are the top stories Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for choosing to listen to news on Equinox uh, Radio. We are uh, television. We are broadcasting live from Equinox Central News Desk in uh, Douala, Cameroon. We begin with a strike action in the nation's uh, political capital, Yaoundé. Uh, some disgruntled teachers of uh, basic education who were not recruited amongst uh, the 1,000 teachers uh, recruited recently by the government of Cameroon today stormed the Ministry of uh, Basic Education in Yaoundé in protest. They say they meet the criteria of those who are supposed to be taken uh, by the government of Cameroon, but surprisingly their names did not feature on uh, the final list of those recruited it by the ministry they say they have questions that have not been answered by the ministry some say they have been teaching having after completing uh, training in Cameroon for several years and have not had a matricle number they thought this was their unique opportunity to get the matricle number by getting access into the public service in Cameroon but unfortunately their names did not future they say they will continue to uh, protest peacefully and continue with a sitting strike action in in the uh, Ministry of uh, Basic Education in Yaoundé until due answers are given to uh, their problems. What is their main problem? To be employed by the government of Cameroon. And we now talk uh, something else apart from away from the strike action in uh, Cameroon. The family of uh, Samuel Wazizi said they are in shock. And of course, I don't think no one will be able to pay their brother who died. And the government kept the truth away from them. The family was met in Boya by our reporter, Simanji Kangebre, in the following report. Since Equinox Television announced the passing away of journalist Samuel Abue Ajieka, a.k.a. Samuel Wazizi on June 3rd, 2020, and confirmed days later by the, the communication officer at the Ministry of Defense, life has never been the same again at the Abue's family residence in Jonji Quarters, Munya, Boya Subdivision of the Southwest Region. According to the media release, Samuel Wazizi died on the 17th of August 2019 and the family was informed. But family says government is telling lies. Nothing. We have not had anything because it's just now I'm just realizing that they said government said they contact the family. They did not contact any family because I'm the junior one before my senior. I'm the person next to Wazizu. They did not contact anybody of my family. Because if they have contacted any uh, my family, we have taken the cops since it's just now that we are just saying that because the matter was adjoined on the 28th to on the 9th. That is when they are saying that they have killed some of us. So we're surprised and shocked. All of us, the family, were surprised and shocked. In the media release of the Ministry of Defense, Samuel Wazizi was being accused of working with separatist fighters. But again, family says the accusation are unfounded. For me, I don't believe that uh, uh, someone knows anything concerning the Amber fighters. Because by the time they arrested him and I went to the police station, I met him and I spoke with him. And when I was talking with him, I asked him, why he was being arrested and he told me that they said he has been working with the amber fighters my brother the way they did the way they talk the man if he if he talks he do he do that kind of thing so i'll be asking my brother he talks say they say some don't we keep amber the whole bush i've asked my brother say on a baby bush has with amber the figure they go amber that's what people they see people make their account for your brother they're not even tell you because that people will fear them we know the joy with them we fear them with fear at its peak 
Equinox TV crew on special assignment in Buya visited the farmland where Samuel Wazizi walked at his spare time. Here, grass has overshadowed the cocoa plantation. According to his closet, Samuel Wazizi died innocently. But we can't take it for us. What do we do? We don't know. We the family, we don't know. There is judgment for court. People, where they keep people, they send them for prison. They, they sentence them. Yeah. Some, they know not take some judgment for court. Talk the offense, we get them. Talk what we do. They charge it for court. Oh. If they increase it, give a life imprisonment. Who knows the wrong you will brother a life imprisonment. To carry my, my small brother, take a job, kill him. Was Wazizi involved or in contact with separatist fighters before his arrest? Her sister-in-law disclosed to us the last discussion she had while Wazizi was still detained in Boya. What really happened at the job site that these people came to arrest you? He said he was at the ha in the house. And when the colleague called him that day, we were looking for him at the police station, at the, work, at the job site. He went there because he was not afraid of anything and he knows nothing about anything. So he went there because he had that confidence for himself. That these are people he has been working with them. And when, even when the government is going out, they call for him to go and work with them. The family of Samuel Wazizi, as well as journalists, civil society organizations, international organizations, are now asking why his death was not disclosed for over nine months. Many are now calling for an independent investigation to be opened to get the real cause of the death of the journalists of Chilean music television in Boya. This is coming at a time when Southwest Regional Governor Bernardo Kalia Bilai and officials of the army are contradicting themselves about the health condition of Samuel Wazizi before he was taken from Boya to Yaoundé. National and international organs are now impatiently waiting for the truth behind the death of Samuel Abue Ajika, a.k.a. Samuel Wazizi. The mayor of uh, Tiku subdivision in the Fako division, southwest region of Cameroon, killed by social media leaves. He lives in uh, Tiku subdivision and speaking today, he said information as such comes from people with evil intention. Listen to the mayor in the following extract. The northwest region now records over 179 COVID-19 cases, with the number rising rapidly according to the regional delegates of public health. In a communique over the weekend, it is revealed 179 persons have been infected in the region with 35 deaths and 31 recoveries. According to Dr. Kingsley Chuso, the rapid rise is due to negligence by the populations. Community allies, health and peace crusaders are now leaving no stone unturned to ensure the locals remain aware and bow way for the pandemic. In Kumbu, Bui Division of the Northwest Region, even religious and members of the Karita services of the Kumbu Diocese have braved insecurity as they have taken to the streets, major junctions and crowd pulling places with their hygiene and awareness messages to the populations. They remind of the spreads in the region. That daily, different persons from risk cities enter the region. Every day, people go in and come out. They go out and come in. Thus, needs to be conscious and stick to barrier and hygiene measures. <laughs> Apart from sensitizing the masses, these actors of the Justice and Peace Commission installed hand-washing tanks at the Kumbu squares in the market and Tobin runabout to facilitate regular hand-washing, distribution of face masks and hydro-alcoholic gels. Wash your hands, you want your face. Clear it, you don't know, get water. You can use your hand sanitizer. You pour your sanitizer for your hands, so you pour them for here. So the initiative is to create the awareness, to be able to help the people 
gain knowledge and have access to preventive measures. But it's just a symbol that, okay, be conscious of something, take initiative, take action, take responsibility to what's washing your hands, take responsibility to what's wearing a mask, take responsibility to what's not touching this or other people. Applaud it initiative which principally aims at preventing coronavirus in Kumbu that records zero case today. C'est vrai que dans le département de Bui et dans la Mante, on n'a pas encore officiellement enregistré des cas. I'll be very happy. I'll be very happy. Uh, very good initiative. Just like the Northwest Regional Delegates of Public Health, these Justice and Peace Crusaders of the Character Services of the Kumbu Diocese urged the inhabitants to scrupulously make use of the materials offered to them and adhere to government's anti-barrier measures to knock out the COVID-19 pandemic. That was rather innocent as a reporting on the measures taken at the level of the northwest region of Cameroon to fight our COVID-19, added to that done by members of our government and the northwest regional delegation of public health elites, religious leaders and civil society actors have joined the fight against COVID-19 in some parts of the Northwest region. You just followed the report of Kumbu, chief town of the Bui Division of the Northwest region. Our Bui Division and the Donga Mountain Division are yet to register a confirmed case of COVID-19, at least officially. And I will continue with our COVID-19 news to talk about a training of our trainers of the Ministry of our Public Health uh, that has ended in uh, Yaoundé, Cameroon's political capital. The train, uh, trainers are from the 10 regions of Cameroon were drilled on the response plan of the government of Cameroon against COVID-19. The training of officials from the regions falls in line with the objective of the government of Cameroon to decentralize the fight against uh, COVID-19 as explained by this official of the Ministry of Public Health. We train them in two major pillars of the response, and that is case management, how to care for people who are uh, uh, contaminated, but also uh, infection prevention and control. Uh, I said earlier on that uh, case management is the, the visible face of the epide epidemic. So that's where people see whether they are taken care appropriately or not. This is where they see whether they can get a bed in a hospital. This is where they can see whether they can get oxygen when they need it. So it's really that pillar that makes a, a difference when other uh, components related to prevention uh, have not worked properly. So the, the, this training is really to train people who have come from those regions in order for them to go back and train uh, colleagues in the district, uh, district hospital, uh, district management, in, again in those two areas of case management and infection prevention and control. And the official also indicated that another factor added to the training in the nation's political capital, or Yaoundi, was to drill the experts on ways to detect areas that are hardest hit by COVID-19 in regions in Cameroon. Take a listen to him once again. We have added and we have recommended that another element of surveillance also be discussed to really uh, get a clear understanding on what is a suspected case and what is a confirmed case and also uh, to, to categorize the, 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 the scope of the infection in the, in, in the, in the country. Uh, all districts are not affected, so to know which districts are not affected which district have imported cases or few cases, which district we are seeing a cluster of cases, and which district we really have a sustained community transmission. Efforts, efforts multiplied at the national level to uh, combat COVID-19, but the numbers have continued to rise in Cameroon as of uh, Sunday, the 7th of June 2020. Cameroon officially registered a total of 8,060 confirmed cases of uh, COVID-19. Just like in Cameroon, Africa, the number of cases have continued to rise across the world, as Immaculate Fogwe tells us in the following report. 
Three months, three weeks, and four days after Egypt and Nigeria recorded their first COVID-19 case across the African continent, latest statistics published by the John Hopkins University says over 150,000 COVID-19 cases have been confirmed, 82,985 have recovered, with 5,189 deaths registered. The five most affected countries are South Africa with 48,285 confirmed cases, Egypt 34,079 cases, Nigeria 12,233, Algeria 10,154 and Ghana with 9,638 cases. The five least affected countries are Lesotho with four confirmed cases, Western Sahara 9, Seychelles 11, Gambia 20 and Namibia with 26 cases. Experts have worried about COVID-19 spreading to Africa because most of the countries lack the necessary equipment, funding and training. A lot of African countries have imposed a range of prevention and containment measures in order to contain the spread of the coronavirus. 7,121,779 people have been infected with the coronavirus in the world. 3,477,390 persons have recovered and a total of 406,721 persons have died. The global community is racing to slow down and eventually halt the spread of the coronavirus. African fabrics have uh, gained attention in Africans, in among Africans, in African countries and the world today. They are worn by Africans and uh, Europeans, but uh, fabric designers in Cameroon say they lack finances to um, better uh, multiply production and sell even out of Africa. Immaculate Fogwe went talking to some of them in the city of Douala and compiled the following report. In recent times, the Ankara fabric has suddenly become a must-have in the wardrobes of many Cameroonians. The high demand of African prints has led to a tremendous boost in sales for some African designers like Gwani Lees, Shasha, Noni White, Amma Betrang, to name but these. From the streets of Douala to the countless catwalk shows all over Cameroon, the Ankara fabric has been highly solicited. I love what they produce in my country. So as you can see, I'm already consuming what is produced in my country and it is being made so here in Douala, so I love it. That's why I dress, I used to dress in African wear. Talking to one of the designers, she explained to us her reason there of choosing the fashion designing business and the level at which the Ankara brand is highly solicited by the Cameroonian population. The fashion industry is fast growing. The fact that I, I match um, two different fabrics because I use um, African print at the same time with other Western prints together to make it very unique. And I've started a new thing again. I now use um, clothing as part of my painting too because I, I love painting. So She further explains that Lack of adequate finance and the altitudes of some customers are the biggest challenge faced in the fashion industry in Cameroon. The greatest challenge we have is finance and the next we say we have the, the people to be able to accept to consume our goods. It's not easy for people to know the difference between a designer or a designer good and a teller. Lovers of Ankara are of the opinion that the Ankara fabric has come to stay and will definitely always be in vogue. And uh, this note, a uh, sad note before we uh, go to the second point, uh, that is talking point, the second part of our newscast, uh, Barrister Summer Francis is no more. The former uh, Bar Council president died this morning in the nation's political capital, Yaoundé, following a brief illness. The fall of uh, Batonier Summer Francis has been described as a big blow uh, to the legal family in Cameroon, but also the Social Democratic Front, SDA political party, as he's been qualified as one of uh, the strong man, no, strong men of uh, national uh, chairman of the SDF party, Ni John uh, Frundi. We shall be coming back to this in subsequent editions of Nook on Equinox at television. Up next, Talking Point.
Thanks, ladies and gentlemen, for joining us on Talking Point. We are receiving Dr. Nick Nguanyam, an entrepreneur, an educationist, and, of course, uh, uh, one of the best minds in Cameroon. Uh, Dr. Nick, thanks again for accepting our invitation. Oh, thank you. And uh, just before we go into the story, I just want to say that uh, I'm so hurt by the death of uh, Barista Summer Francis and many others that I came to learn about today. And uh, to say that in this time, all those that have lost their lives, uh, we pray that God would forgive them their sins and accept them into his kingdom. And uh, we just hope that the family will have the courage to bear the loss. Rest in peace. May their souls rest in peace. Uh, Doug, it's important, and at a time when uh, COVID-19 is taking the lives of so many people, we had the case of uh, the family of uh, Wazizi. You must have heard of a journalist who was arrested uh, in Buya, taken to Yaoundé, and uh, months after, Ekinox, uh, after find it findings, declared that he he died, and the government of Cameroon a few days later came to accept that Wazizi died, and the family was informed. But we went back to the family and just like you got them saying in that report they were never contacted to be told that their brother died and they did not stop cursing those they claim killed their brothers or they think killed their brothers it's a very unfortunate situation and uh, what you should realize that uh, life is a sacred and uh, we should you know we should not take away the lives of others directly or indirectly um, just know that uh, whatever you do to others, you'll be paid in the same coins or even more. And sometimes you can be punished by God to the fourth generation. And uh, I just want to, to, I just hope that what we are thinking is not what happened and that he died of natural causes. Or if he was sick and someone neglected to take him to hospital for treatment, you are still liable. Um, that said, it doesn't matter what happens if the police catch you. They should take you to court and you'll be charged and you know you, i mean you go to court and you explain yourself if you if you if you did something wrong then you're put in prison and whatever the justice should follow its course justice and uh, course. you know um doing the kind of thing that was done to george floyd is not acceptable it's a sad one uh, doc it must also be uh noted that the the family is uh, even more confused at a time when uh, a, a contradictory statement is coming from uh, the central government. Uh, Cameroon, through the Minister of Defence, said uh, Wazizi came from Buya severely ill or sick and was taken to the hospital. But just before the declaration from the Minister of Defence, we had uh, the Southwest Governor saying, "No, I don't have a hand in Wazizi's disappearance. He left Buya, my area of command." In good health and was taken to your only the bottom line is that wazizi is dead and god, god knows the truth and okay. whoever killed him would pay the price uh, doctor you um before i ask our uh, questions on um, issues uh, that i would love you to edify public opinion on you watch the news from start to finish what was the most striking thing the most striking thing, I must say that uh, though I was watching the news, you know, the, the deaths that have uh, been occurring, you know, they, they were in my mind. And so I, I probably didn't pay as much attention. Yeah. But I know that you showed pictures of some, some teachers who are on strike in Yaoundé. Yes, they are. Uh, besides that, what else did you show? I showed eight teachers on strike. The, the, that's the continuous increase of COVID-19 cases. Yeah, the continuous the increase. Cameroon yes, that's correct. Mm -hmm. Yes, mm -hmm. and of course, uh, there was an extract of the mayor of uh, Tiko. We announced yeah, yeah. he's been killed by the social media, but he lives in Tiko. That's right. So, so yes, there, there are issues about the continuous increase of COVID-19 in our, in our country and the other African nations. I was talking, I was talking, I was, I had a little argument with some people on social media. You know, when you interpret statistics you know should be you should be very careful because if we if we were to say the number of um, the number of COVID cases per 10,000 people in the country then the, the, then the statistics will show differently because you know when you take a country like Nigeria that has almost one, one, 180 million people yes. and then you look at their numbers and then you look at Cameroon with just about 25 million people and you look at our numbers then you realize that probably if you were to if you were to 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 to, to correct it with a population factor yes. you the, will see that the, we are just as bad or, or 
or yes. a, 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 a hundred uh, people, yeah. you see that. Just say, take, take, take for every 10,000, for every 1,000 people 1, in people. our population, yeah. how, many, uh, how, how many cases do you have? If you use the factor like that, then you would see that probably Cameroon is just as bad as Nigeria, and we are not doing well. Uh, so let us not deceive ourselves thinking that because somebody has these numbers, we are, you know, you, we are better off than they are. No, we are not doing well at all. And one can understand that because our strategies have not been the best. Oh, 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 doc, uh, what is exactly wrong with uh, Cameroon's strategy in the fight of, against COVID-19? Because uh, at, uh, at this level, the ministry says it is uh, fighting hard to decentralize the fight against COVID-19, handle it at the uh, local levels. They've been testing, and uh, the last time I checked, the government communicated that they bought test kits uh, to be able to test as uh, many people in Cameroon as possible. Um, there's a lot of mistakes with the strategies. Okay. There's a lot of mistakes with the strategies. I'm sorry to say that. Listen, we have this disease, and uh, while this disease was still in China, we had to put our thinking caps on. And then when the disease got to Europe and we knew that Air France and the other planes were flying and bringing in people, we had to put in place the right strategies to be able to fight the disease. But we didn't. And I'm surprised that it's only today, we are two months behind time, that you are calling trainer of trainers to Yaoundé to train them on how to... This is, this is just... This, it just beats my mind. F so what were you doing all this time? You know? What, what were you doing? So, what strategies did you put in place? Honestly, I, sometimes I don't really know what's going on. As if regions were allowed yes, for, you, for the you disease don't. to penetrate, then you begin to call oh, yes. people to train them. You don't feed your pig on the day of the market. It's, it's very simple logic. You have to anticipate. You have to, you have to be proactive. We are reactive, and that's why we are having a lot of problems. I, I don't know how best to say this. And the problem with the COVID-19 management in Cameroon is, you know, this is a special war that is fought by the technicians. And the technicians are the medical teams with everybody in the two confondu doctors, nurses, pharmacists, everybody, everybody, epidemiologists, and so on. They are the technicians. But we see a situation where the fight was hijacked by administrators of all categories, and they were doing their own thing about it, thinking they were doing the best of things and just kind of like topi doing things and giving our wrong, wrong information and wrong, wrong strategies. So everything had just gone haywire. And because of that, the population became confused. And now, so you give some, some instructions, then you counter them and so on. You do this, do that. So everybody is doing his own thing. One says, I'm going to make tablets of Nivaquin. The other says, this, that, 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 that. At the end, the population is confused. But this is the thing. We, we need three pillars to be able to address ourselves to the COVID. One pillar is the management team, which, which is made up of the scientific team, and the administration. And when you come to that, that this management is the scientific team that takes the lead and the administration gives them the support. But things were reversed and we put, we, we put the administration at the head of things to do things that they don't understand and they kept on doing business as usual, kicking people around and, causing, and, 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 and making a bad situation worse. So we have the management team, we have the, the, the population the population, the population has been taken for granted, yet you cannot succeed in fighting a disease like COVID-19 without the support of the population. Then you need the logistics, that is the money and whatever. So you have the management team over here making of administrators and uh, the, the, the whatever, the doctors, whatever. And then you have the population here that has to understand what you are doing so that they can help you. You know, you work together in one direction. But you would have noticed that the administration has been antagonizing the population instead yeah. and kicking them around. Once you do that, then mm -hmm. you don't gain their support. You know, it's very, very unfortunate. Everybody has something to do 
or a price to pay as the fight as uh, or something to contribute as far as the fight against COVID-19 is concerned. And you know, when you want people to join you to fight a fight, you must be speaking the same language with them. You must speak with them, encourage them, and see what they can do. Even if it's just bringing one brick onto the table, that brick is not small. You know, someone can bring one brick, but what you are looking out for, which 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 allows, if he's bringing one brick, and and then his mind and his his energy his, is with you, you are the winner. But when let's say students students are doing their best are trying to make masks are trying to make a uh, um, uh, hydro alcoholic, uh, alcoholic gel and yes. so on and then they are insulted that, that that makes a bad situation worse when that's the situation uh, yes. I, we saw that with yes, the minister it's, 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 of uh, it's, it's very Secondary unfortunate Education. it's very she very got unfortunate mad when she went to a technical school no. in Yaoundé and realizes that students that's what a school is all about that's what that's what that's what handwork is all about that is what science and technology is all about it's she not thought they would have gotten permission from her no they, they don't need any permission they they need what they needed was guidance Okay, and those children are being taught by their teachers who have uh, uh, first degrees and master's degrees. They are, they, are, they, are, they are good in chemistry. Even as we speak here, children in other countries are, 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 are doing computer coding, uh, uh, um, uh, have their hands on how to make cell phones, how to design things and so on. Us is just mixing. What, what, I mean, what is there in making a mask? All you have to do is, in fact, if, what we should do now is tell all you, all children in, in, in secondary schools to help make masks, just give them the specifications and tell them what it takes to make a mask and help them to make a mask, control their quality and encourage the people. When the children are making the mask, the children will be, will be happy to use the mask. All right? Y and yes. Okay. Oh, Doc, it's, it's very clear uh, what you're explaining there. But now I want to talk about the population when they should support the initiative, either led by the government or, 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 or the private sector or leaders of a civil society. What I want to say is, it is a public health danger. Yes. Must the people wait for somebody to call them to stand up? That is the, that is, that, that is the thing. We have had this, we've had this thing in our nation where, you know, someone says, you are not supposed to take any initiative. Mm. Wait on me. If I don't take any initiative, you don't take initi in any initiative. You are treating people like if they were donkeys or sheep. Mm. People are not donkeys. They are not sheep. Everybody has gone to school. You know, you could be picked and put this, 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 but don't consider other people as donkeys. No. People have the right to think and to think out of the box. And that has been the problem. Why are our streets dirty? Why are things not working? Because everybody kind of like folds his hands and say, we are waiting on government. Government alone cannot do everything. No. Mm. And... Even when government are doing things, you know, the fighting the COVID-19 or fighting this issue of hygiene and sanitation in the community is a behavioral thing. Mm. The spread of the disease is a behavioral thing, and there's no way you can, you, can, you, 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 can, you can decree that. The only thing that you want to do to succeed is to work hand in glove with the population. Mm. You cannot antagonize the, 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 the population and think you would win. It's a mistake. And, uh, Doc, just you, you, you raised uh, the financial part of it that must be made available. The government has, uh, uh, through the president, has just decided to reduce the 2020 uh, budget. Uh, of uh, camp rule by a uh, close to five billion yes money uh, according to uh, the, the government will be dedicated to the fight against COVID-19 and because of the impacts of COVID-19 uh, such amounts could not be raised to do other things in the country is that a good yes. strategy yes it's a good strategy because uh, I was thinking about it let's you know for people to really understand you know when the COVID-19 came on board and then I heard some other governments saying we have this this billions to fight the COVID-19 and we had a mega one billion and then a two billion you know it was not very clear what was happening but when I talked to an economist he said look the the the, um, the budget had already been voted and there is no money lying around to be dedicated to the COVID-19 so it was important that they go back to the, um, to, the to the National Assembly take a scissors or a knife and chop off little bits from 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 areas that they thought were not as important as the COVID-19 to make a little package for COVID-19 and I think that is okay but this is the danger 
You know, the problem in Cameroon has never really mu very much been the absence of money, but rather that the little money that is, the little or the much money that is available is misused through um, excessive billing, you know, um, wrong allocation of funds, and then, you know, people just enrich themselves on, on, on issues that are very unethical. You know, I was just so surprised, for instance, that someone in our country was producing face masks and, and, uh, and, and, and telling us that they, they cost, they cost 1,300 francs a mask. Mm. That is enough money to buy to produce f uh, five masks. So, you know, we, we, we need to actually realize that this disease is very dangerous and the little money we have, we should use it judiciously. Um, you know, we need to we, we have been spending money carelessly, mm -hmm. buying, you know, you, you, you have somebody whose salary is probably one, 180 or 200,000 francs a month, but because he occupies some post, you go buy a big car for him, for him that is 80, 80 million francs that he cannot fuel, he cannot repair, he cannot, then he, he, you know, just to boost his ego. Once you do that, the 200,000 francs becomes so small, he needs to be able to, to put his hands over there, over there, to make, you, you know, to, to, to get money, to, to keep a certain lifestyle that is not his. And that's what has been <coughs> happening, it's been misuse of the budget, and I would, I would think that even half of our national budget is wrongly used. Uh, uh, yes, uh, 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 Doc, some people who probably do not understand why the government decided to chop up the budget to fight COVID-19. Uh, we're asking the government to be accountable enough on the special uh, fund that was created uh, to fight COVID-19 to be accountable enough for, uh, with regards to the amount that was given, for example, by the government and some uh, citizens to the special fund created. Yeah, I think there might be some kind of accountability, but it's not to the public, it's to themselves. You know, it's not to the public because... Uh, Is that correct? I, I don't know. I don't know. I don't know. I don't want to say something here that would take me to court or to prison. But look, listen. Um, you, you know that in 2000, was it in 2013 or 2007 when the president made available 121 billion as a special package for youths? That money... God alone knows what happens. It just went like that, and I don't know what happened. Mm. If, you, if, if uh, probably we should start from there to come to the COVID-19. There have been so so much money pumped out for this, for this, for this, and we see nothing on the field. And someone needs to be telling us what is going on. So we le let's move uh, for that bit to talk about these uh, young graduate teachers, trained teachers. Those who graduated, they hoped they, some of them have been teaching, at least most of them, those who we saw in Yaoundé, those who saw at the minist ministerial building in Yaoundé, were teaching. They, 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 they were not teaching under the payroll of the government. And uh, the launch recruitment, they thought they were going to be recruited. Surprisingly, their names were not there. They saw names of people who just graduated and others who are not even teaching were into some other things. Their names are on the list. They came out angry. Yeah, that's the problem. That, that. That's the problem with Cameroon. It's human nature. We don't. We 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 lack the sense of truth. We lack the sense of responsibility. And um, when it's black, we say it's white. And uh, when you work with those conditions, nothing works, and you create more trouble than solutions. Doc, uh, who trains our people and uh, does not measure? I mean, is it, not suppo is it not supposed to be a kind of a balanced calculation between those who are training as teachers and the number of people who might want to recruit in one year or in two years' time? If you go to the north of Cameroon and you look at the, 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 what we call schools, they are not schools, little thatches, you know, with, with, with a teacher, you know, with, with uh, so many children to, uh, to attend to, the need for teachers is there, but we are not recruiting at the, at the rate at which we want. In mm. fact, in, uh, in, in well developed nations, you have two teachers per class. So to, to think that we even have enough teachers is a, is, is, is a mistake. So um, there, is, uh, there is a need for the teachers, but I would imagine the, bud there are no bud the budget is not good enough to, to imp employ everybody and pay, but uh, we need to work much harder and change the, day we d the way we do business and realize that proper training for our children <coughs> is the best thing that we can do for them. All right, Doc, there is uh, this important thing, Barrister Tanford Richard, uh, one of uh, the legal minds in Cameroon, you know so well, on, on Ekinos confirmed that the, that is uh, the court case of uh, the Ngabu massacre is um, caught in Yaoundé under preliminary trials in Yaoundé, but the majority of the victims, they are not aware. They, they, they don't know. And of course, he went further to state that uh, those concerned and their leaders were only shocked to be informed that they needed to bring some victims for testimony in court. How do we explain this, uh, 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 Doug? Um, if, if the, the, the um, you see, 
it's just unfortunate. It's just unfortunate. Um, sometimes you can you can you can play around with the with the elements of the law to get away with a lot of things. Um, but this is it. The children were killed in Gabo. Mm -hmm. You know, you, you could still be a very smart and do this and do this to show that you know and get off the hook. But with God, you are not going to get off the hook. So if you think the people were wrong and you need to punish them, just go ahead and do what you have to do and punish them. If you think they were not wrong, then leave them alone and stop trying to blame people. Because even if people came from the village to that court, they would be so intimidated. They have never been to Yaoundé. They were so intimidated, they would not know what to say. Because they have been really been traumatized. Traumatized is the word. And, and uh, I would think that the government should just do what is right, just and good. All right, uh, Doc, it's a very uh, sad situation also. And to note that the lawyers are expected to answer present in court tomorrow with their clients, but the victims were not aware and they were not prepared. It's sad. Well, that's not the point. At the end of the day, whether, they, whether, whether the, the victims are the people who are dead. The victims are not those who are still going on. So it's an issue. It's an issue between the people who are dead and those that kill them. And no one should try to use any tricks to get away with it. Use any tricks you want, but just know that you will pay. Thanks. Dr. Nick Guanyam, thanks very much. It was an interesting uh, conversation. My pleasure. Ladies and gentlemen, we are grateful. We thank you for your very kind attention. We shall believe you, but stay with Equinox Television. Interesting programs continue on your number one television channel. Have a nice evening.